Hi, I'm Molly Wood and welcome to the Buzz Report. And now for the Gadget of the Week. The Gadget of the Week is the Microsoft Zune. It hits the market on Tuesday, November 14th, and it is a hotly anticipated entry into the MP3 player market. Now, we got an early look at the device, and you know, it looks pretty decent. It comes in brown, which is kind of neat. The lack of compatibility with Place for Sure is kind of a bummer, and the integrated Wi-Fi features are interesting, but maybe not a major reason to buy. But the real problem, I think, might be the size. I mean, it's not like horribly huge. Well, I don't know. I'll let you decide for yourself. What do you think? Not that bad, right? And now for the news. As you know, this week was election day here in the United States, and millions of Americans cast their votes on controversial electronic voting machines. But I'm happy to report that there wasn't a single problem with any e-voting machines. In fact, our new president, R2-D2, calls it the smoothest election he's ever seen. Did we even vote for president? In other election news, after years of ignoring the contributions of bloggers and so-called citizen journalists, CNN tried to bring them into the tent during this week's election return coverage. They held a blogger party where they'd periodically check in on influential internet writers and ask them for their opinions. Then they'd get back to the real news anchors and get on with their jobs. Pretty much the same strategy as normal. Dutch beer maker Heineken has developed a new system for tracking its beer using satellite technology. The system works a little something like this. Excuse me. The Civil Liberties Group, Reporters Without Borders, has named its annual list of enemies of the internet. The group says countries like Egypt, Cuba, Iran, China, North Korea, and Turkmenistan are restricting freedom of expression online. But you know what? Here at Buzz Headquarters, we have a different list. In fact, I humbly present to you the Buzz Report's top five enemies of the internet. Number five, Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert encouraged people to edit Wikipedia to add false information about African elephants. If you can't trust a fake conservative on his fake news show to protect the integrity of a fake encyclopedia, who can you trust? Number four, Senator Ted Stevens. On second thought, I'm not so sure about this one. I mean, is it fair to call a guy an enemy of the internet when he coined one of the funniest analogies for the internet that I've ever heard? The internet is a series of tubes. Yeah, no, I'm changing my vote. Ted Stevens, champion of the tubes. Number three, Borat. Sasha Baron Cohen refuses to acknowledge similarities between his Borat character and 1999 internet celebrity Mahir Kagri, who became famous for his I Kiss You website, which contained invitations for women to come stay at his house and have sex with him. But that's understandable. I mean, that's not nearly offensive enough material for Borat. Number two, BitTorrent. If the movie studios didn't have to spend so much time and money fighting you guys, they could be building a sensible, open platform to digitally distribute movies to the public at reasonable prices. Damn you, BitTorrent. Quit screwing around and let those good people get back to work. And number one, Britney Spears. If she wasn't taking up all the search results for hot blonde on the internet, then I'd be number one. Boom, enemy of the internet. I'm Molly Wood and this has been the Buzz Report. Thanks for watching.